Here in Northern California, on the western slope of the Sierra Nevada, flow the clear, sparkling waters of the Feather River, a river once prized for its gold, a river once feared for its floods. Today, the floodwaters of the Feather River have been tamed and stored here in the foothills as the primary water storage facility for the California State Water Project. This has been made possible by an outstanding engineering achievement, Oroville Dam. At the dam site, work began on the first of two tunnels, which would divert the river during dam construction. Part of the river channel was closed off. This allowed crews to expose the bedrock on which the dam's concrete core block would be built. In 1963, the placing of earth fill material began. The contractor, Oro Dam Constructors, modified an abandoned railroad to move the earth fill material 12 miles from a gold dredged tailing area to the dam site. A huge bucket wheel excavator scooped up rock and gravel at the rate of more than 3,500 cubic yards per hour. The material was sent on conveyor belts to the train loading area. After it was screened, the material was sent by conveyor belt to train loading hoppers. By filling 10 cars at one time, an entire 40 car train was loaded in less than 15 minutes. Three sets of locomotives continually shuttled the cars between the dam and the borrow site. At the unloading area, the cars were dumped automatically without needing to be uncoupled. The material again rode the conveyors. The impervious clay going right to the dam. And the coarser material going to a mixing and temporary stockpiling area. Each type of material went to its own specific part of the dam where it was dumped, spread, and packed down. Inspectors monitored the operation constantly to maintain quality control. In 1964, the second diversion tunnel was completed. By the end of the year, the construction of the upstream portion of the dam rose to 425 feet. In December of 1964, a record flood roared down the forks of the Feather River. But Oroville Dam was ready. And although only partially finished, it controlled the flood, saving downstream farms and cities millions of dollars in damage and possible loss of life. Meanwhile, deep within the left abutment of the dam, the powerhouse was being carved out of solid rock. Up top, Construction continued around the clock to build Oroville Dam. Day by day, week by week, the dam grew. When completed, it would stand 770 feet high. It would be 6,900 feet long, 3,500 feet thick at the base, and contain 80 million cubic yards of earth material. In 1967, the final load of earth was put in place. The last diversion tunnel was closed, and Lake Oroville began to fill with water, one year ahead of schedule. Oroville Dam's powerhouse, later to become the Edward Hyatt Power Plant, was also nearing completion. It had been almost seven years since ground was broken to begin construction, and it was time to celebrate again. On May 4, 1968, Oroville Dam was formally dedicated by Governor Ronald Reagan. Here before you is Lake Oroville, filling to its destiny for the use of flood control, hydroelectric power, irrigation, municipal and domestic purposes, and as one of the greatest recreational and fishery lakes in California. And off there, 
is the highest dam in the United States. This is a major achievement of our time, and it's with great pride, therefore, that I simply dedicate Oroville Dam and Lake Oroville to the people of California's future who will benefit from this giant structure and the water that it impounds. Thank you very much. Good morning. It is Thursday, February 16th. I apologize right off the bat. I don't know if you can tell, but it's been raining and storming, and I caught a little break in the rain right now to come out and take a video, but it is still really, really windy, and it's definitely blowing my little tripod set up here around, so I don't think there's any way around it. This video is going to be shaky. Um, So I didn't really think I was going to keep doing updates, but obviously based on all the comments people have left and the amount of views, uh, a lot of people are still interested to see things from this vantage point. So that's cool. I don't mind as long as people are interested coming out and taking a video or two. Um, looks like they've made quite a bit of progress from yesterday on, on putting down this uh, rock layer and then cementing it in. One look at the nation's tallest dam and you'll see the problem. I got people displaced right now. Yeah. Huge. People who live above the broken spillway are at home like the Cross family. Anyone below had to leave in a hurry. We drove to Oracle for the first time yesterday and it was like a ghost town. Yeah, like, More than a thousand people from around Oroville, California have gathered here at the fairgrounds, and many were here for days. I can't go to school because the water was empty. Emily Bang is six. And they know that they're not home, and they do want to go home so bad. Where are you sleeping, Emily? I sleep in there, so... Cots like these are Emily's bedroom. Today is a day of confusion. It's a day of, this is not my bed. This is not my kitchen. This isn't what my mom and dad usually do. Nothing is normal. Last year, drought. Now, California is desperately trying to turn off the water. How do you feel a hole that big? Well, you take rocks, you throw them into a big bag. This one weighs 4,000 pounds. Look at this. They have ordered 1,500 of these to get the job done. You can't lift it with a forklift or a human being to do this job. You need this bird right here. This is an ex-military Black Hawk helicopter with a big cable on it. They hook it to those bags. They throw it on the dam. You can only do that kind of work while the sun is shining. It's going to take a lot of helicopters and boulders to fill that chasm. It's a time of hurt. It doesn't matter if you're 80 like me or if you're only three or four. Being disrupted and kicked out of your community until it's repaired, it's disaster. Happy birthday! Amazing how a few pieces of paper and the world's smallest Beatles cover band can start to... How you say it? It is better, but not exactly fixed at this point. Not there yet. She's singing that song 45 minutes down that way. We are standing on top of the dam here. They are putting these in temporary place on top of that emergency spillway. It's plugged enough that they're allowing people to go back to their communities, Maria, but not everybody is going back. They're still worried about the rain coming from the sky. All right, Dave Malkoff live in Oroville, California, and uh, absolutely appreciate Dave bringing us the stories. I mean, imagine having to live through this and then a forecast.
seeing this, more rain, uh, at least through Monday to Tuesday, and then of course beyond that, as well, we're just in this pattern where we're going to continue to see this onslaught of storminess across the west. Good afternoon, everyone. As you see at the Oroville Dam, they're now going to try what they call the rock shot, where they're going to try to dump bags of aggregate crushed stones into that water that's moving at 100,000 cubic feet per second. You see the ferocity of the water. There's no way that's going to work. It reminds me very much of what they called the junk shot when they were trying to plug the BP oil spill, giving false hope to people. Now you got to realize that they've asked you to evacuate your home. You're not coming back for weeks or months, possibly never again. So if you're still in that zone and on the edge where you weren't evacuated, if it starts to overtop and break during this next storm, you will be asked to evacuate. I highly encourage you to get all of your valuables together, get everything that you don't want to lose, and get it into a pack at least so you can grab it and get ready to get out your door. Whether that be jewelry from your family heirlooms, your firearms for sure, any types of documents that you'll need, anything with leases, stock certificates, anything of value you're going to have to take with you. If you're allowed back in your homes for any period of time, once you grab that second set of whatever it is, you probably will never come back to your home again. I wish you all good luck. You can see that this was pre the usage of the emergency spillway as there's very little erosion yet and the access road right there in front is still intact which it no longer is that whole area is gone it's been eroded away You see all that turbulent water there spraying right there at the bottom half of the primary spillways where the channel's all being eroded away, the concrete's all gone, it's cutting into the hillside. That's where they're attempting to put bags of rocks in an attempt to uh, short the area up. But 100,000 cubic meters of water flowing through there is uh, quite strong.